The third category are they neutral. For them to produce flowers, the duration of day or night period or dark period doesn't make any difference. So examples of this. Tomatoes, cucumber, the cotton also. So these are some day neutral plants where they would produce flowers irrespective of the duration of the daytime or light period. Now scientists believe that there is a substance which is responsible for perceiving this light and it stimulates flowering. That substance is known as florigen. The name florigen is flower generating or substance which is helping in production of the flower. This substance has not been isolated yet and that is why it is a hypothetical substance. But scientists believe that this substance exists, though they have not been able to uh, successfully isolate any such substance or chemical. The site where this florigen is present gets synthesized or activated in presence of light is the leaf. So site of florigen activation or synthesis is leaf. Experiments were performed using xanthium. So the experiment which proved that that substance which helps in flowering is present or is synthesized in the leaf. It was done on xanthium. What was done was two plants of xanthium were taken Almost everything same. And one plant was given the required photo period. We know xanthium is a short day plant. We just now wrote this example. It is a short day plant. So now we know what requirements are there for xanthium to flower. It requires a short day and a long uninterrupted night period or dark period. Those required conditions were provided to one plant and this plant was not provided. So not provided with required conditions. The required conditions are short day duration and long dark phase or the night period. So one plant was provided this condition and the other plant was not provided these conditions. After this one leaf from the plant which was provided with these conditions, this leaf was grafted on the other plant. So now after grafting, this plant showed flowering. Two plants were taken. One plant, both the plants are of xanthium or were of xanthium. Xanthium is a short day plant. One plant was provided the required photo period, that means short day duration and long uninterrupted dark days. The other plant was not provided these required conditions. So if required conditions are not provided, that particular plant will not flower or will not produce flowers that we saw just uh, in the previous uh, segment. But the plant which was provided with all optimum required condition from that one leaf was taken and it was grafted on 
the other xanthium plant where the conditions were not the, as per the requirement but still it produced flowers that means the substance which is required for flowering which scientists say that it is this florigen is synthesized in the leaf part and that confirmed that site is leaf and second thing that there is a substance which is perceiving this light stimulus and is responsible for flowering though the scientists have not been successful yet in extracting this substance and that is why we call it a hypothetical or imaginary substance but it exists and it is present in the leaf so now light photoperiod is an important factor for uh, plants for flowering the second condition is lower temperature or vernalization so let us discuss that now the second condition required for flowering is low temperature and it was observed that when plants are exposed to low temperature then they produce flowering so requirement of low temperature for flowering was termed as vernalization this term vernalization was given by lysenko now this idea or this uh, concept that low temperature is required actually came from the experiments done by scientist Clippart. Clippart was working on wheat varieties. So this was from the experiments by Clippart. He was working on wheat varieties and he found that there are two wheat varieties. One is known as the winter wheat variety and the second is known as the spring wheat or spring wheat variety. Now what was observed was, let us write down the seasons here, the winter, then it is the spring and the summer. Now when spring variety is sown, obviously as the name tells us spring it is sown in spring so it produced flowers in summer so this was the time when flowering was seen so spring variety is sown in spring and it produces flowers and then the grains in summer or by end of summer and winter variety is sown in winters and it also flowers and produces grains in summer or by end of summer. So when Clippard observed this change, he tried or experimented one thing. He exposed winter variety seeds to low temperature. And when these seeds were exposed to low temperature their behavior was like spring varieties that means winter variety requires a phase of low temperature only after that it is going to produce flowers and grains spring variety does not require that exposure of low temperature so what he did was he took the winter variety wheat grains exposed them to low temperature and then observed that the behavior of winter variety was exactly as spring variety that means winter variety seeds after exposure to low temperature if are sown in spring season then they produce flowers and uh, produce grains also immediately after the summer season so that indicates that some seeds require low temperature before they can flower 
and this was also seen in many biennial crops also and in those crops one winter season is required for the flowering to take place so in one winter season we sow those seeds then the entire uh, spring summer goes the next winter that period low temperature when the plant gets after that only it produces flowers so that means the duration of uh, the plants life to produce grains was a longer that's why we are calling them biennial crop scientists have understood that these seeds they require low temperature treatment so if they are given low temperature and then sown they are going to behave like the other variety of plants or seeds and this was seen in case of wheat variety the scientist whose experiment uh, was on this wheat variety was the name of the scientist was clipper and term vernalization was given by lysenko now similar to flowering vernalization also has a hypothetical substance which is known as vernalin and again we are calling it hypothetical because scientists have not been successful yet in isolating it so it is hypothetical substance and the site where this vernalin is produced site of vernalin production is the meristematic cells it could be the apical meristem it could be the leaf bud so it could be meristematic region that is normally apical meristem that we are talking of or we can also call it a leaf bud because bud also has the meristematic tissue and again this was proved by those grafting experiments so when a bud exposed to low temperature a plant was exposed to low temperature its bud was taken and it was grafted on other plant which was not given this low temperature treatment and it showed flowering so similar kind of experiment was done with this uh, substance also and it has not been isolated yet so we call it a hypothetical substance so for flowering to take place there are two main conditions which are required by the plants one is the photo period and we have seen the three varieties the long day short day and day neutral plants and the second condition which is required is low temperature treatment which is known as vernalization and for both for flowering and for vernalization there are two hypothetical substances for flowering it is florigen whose site is leaf and for vernalin the site is apical meristem or the terminal bud or it could be the leaf bud so after second phase that is flowering or reproductive phase now the plant goes into the third phase that is senescence and death so after these two that is germination first phase vegetative growth and then reproductive phase now let us talk about senescence and death